how do I know that I am becoming or I have become a spiritual man? Are you ready? There are a few things, features that must be captured within the life of a believer as proof that that person is a spiritual man. Let me run through the list for you. Number one, any spiritual man you know must have encountered Christ through the new birth experience. Any man. This is why I said a spiritual man is not just one who is open to the realm of the spirit. There are many people who are not saved and they can see visions. There are many people who are trained traditionally in the village and their organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit by fraternity with demon spirits are opened in a heightened way. They can see you coming from a distance and call your name. The lady, the damsel who had the spirit of divination, her prophecy was accurate and yet she was not saved. Are we learning? So for you to be a spiritual man, number one, you must have encountered Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. Please write that down. You must have encountered Christ, Jesus Christ, through the new birth experience. Number two, a spiritual man is one who has had an experience with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be a spiritual man if you have not encountered the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. These are the factors that produce true spirituality in believers. Number one, an experience with Jesus, the son of the living God, the new birth experience. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Can I give you number three? The factors that define a spiritual man. A spiritual man is one who has a thorough comprehension of the principles of the kingdom as revealed in scripture. A thorough comprehension of the principles of the kingdom, the ways of God as revealed in scripture. Don't forget this third point. A spiritual man is not just a Bible study giant. Is one who through the lens of scripture primarily has come into a thorough comprehension of the ways of God. The principles of the kingdom as revealed in scripture. You have that down? So number one, an encounter with Jesus Christ through the new birth experience. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, a thorough comprehension of the principles of the kingdom, the ways of God as revealed in scripture. Number four, who is a spiritual man according to scripture? Number one, number four, the man who has willingly chosen to submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Ah, this is an important one. The man who has willingly chosen to submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Just because you have an encounter with God by his spirit does not mean you have chosen to submit. A spiritual man is one who has willingly underlined that word will. Your will has an active role to play in your becoming spiritual. Willingly submitted to the Lordship, the leadership of the Spirit of God. Mm. Let me tell you the truth. Do you know how difficult it is to truly submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> when you submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the first thing that happens is a thorough disruption of life as you have defined it your way. Did you hear what I said? A thorough disruption of life as you have defined or arranged it your way. 
when God comes into your life, he does not continue with your life the way you designed it. There is a disruption of that plan. It's the reason why many people cannot submit to the Spirit of God. Because you have pledged loyalty to God by His Spirit. I will go. I will go. Wherever you lead me. I will go. I will go, I will go, wherever you lead me. This is the reason why God likes songs of surrender. Because he will answer them quickly. In all these songs we sing, God, take everything. Say, aha, uh -huh, this is what I've been waiting for. But you see, because the spirit of God is not a demon spirit, at every point in his leadership journey with you, he will have to verify that you are still willing to trust him. Did you hear what I said? He will not usurp it over you. No. I'm willing to guide you. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Submitting to the leadership of the Holy Spirit is based on the understanding that God's ways are not your ways. Neither his thoughts your thoughts. Are we together? That you can want life your way. Ah, but if you can trust God, let me tell you the truth. The initial point of your journey with the Holy Spirit will be rough. And it is not rough because that's how he leads. It is rough because of the bad plans you have made for yourself. That in your own wisdom, you believe you have designed an excellent life. Here he comes. Spirit of the living God. Ah! I love the Holy Spirit. Oh. When he steps into your life, you who is thinking politics, politics, me, I know I will win the election. He just comes upon you and gently he starts doing a U-turn. And for some people, it's 180 degrees. Are we together? Let me tell you what it means to submit to the Holy Spirit. To submit your will, to submit your plans, to submit your ways, and to be willing to receive from him even if it is inconveniencing you, you trust the fact that he represents, he is the spirit of the father and that he has your best interest. It may not make sense, but somewhere along the journey after 10 years, you will see the wisdom of his leadership. Someone please listen to me. Because one of the ways canal people get into trouble is judging 10 years using the myopic lens of today. God can look at you and tell you, join this chariot. It may not make sense till after 11 years. You will see why he brought you to that relationship. You will see why he brought you to Koinonia. The version of you that came may not make sense. God, what are you doing with me? And he says, you just be consistent. When he calls you to enter the ark, it's because the rain is coming. And just because the rain did not come for 120 years, be patient. When the rain comes, you will see the value of that wisdom. Are we together? Yes. It's the reason why the greatest way Satan deceives believers is to act as the Holy Spirit. Because he knows that believers have opened up themselves to be yielded. That is another discussion. Satan hardly attacks believers as Satan. He comes with the disguise of the Holy Spirit. Because he knows if he comes as Satan, you will cast him. So he will come as an angel of light. And suggest things using scripture. But you need a level of maturity to say no. Even though this sounds good, this is not the Holy Spirit. God does not lead this way. This is why you have to know the Holy Spirit before you submit to him. If you submit to any voice and any entity that is not just human, you will find out you have been submitting to many entities. And many believers, they think it's the Holy Spirit leading them. They would die believing it's the Holy Spirit leading them. But upon the lens of a spiritually matured person, you will see the gaps that this level of submission is to a demon spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. 
this is a deliverance service for someone now there are people who have done stupid things in the name of being led by the spirit i will be showing you another element of being spiritual because if the only thing you do to be spiritual is submission to spirits you are in trouble i told you if satan uses evil to destroy you and you resist it he will use good the most important thing is he wants you to be destroyed so we have respectfully speaking we have an army of sincere people in the body of christ doing all kinds of things and the basis of their confidence they will tell you see my notebook see it god told me i know what i saw you are right but we need to judge the kind of influence and there is a way to judge spirits this is why the bible says strong meat let me leave that one we're coming there you see that you can judge spirits if you are open-hearted tonight for someone it can be a deliverance service now to ask yourself this journey i'm taking i don't see the light and i'm not i'm seeing everything around it is taking me backward i'm going into a pit is this really the voice of god and when you check you will find out that you are being led by a demon spirit and you do not know if jesus had to pray for peter and say satan desired did he come like a, a beast with horns you think peter would not have resisted him he slipped into peter and he used peter's compassion there are people who have left their place of glory and their place of assignment because they had a voice and the voice spoke beautifully the voice came through a dream and said go to this place the voice came and turned their destiny helpers to look like demons and they got up from that dream hating the people who will bless them listen carefully oh this message is to bless you we're talking about the spiritual man that a spiritual man in addition to an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit must submit to the lordship of the spirit let me tell you one classic sign to know that is the holy spirit leading you there is nothing he will ever tell you that will be by force no you will be constrained but the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit of God, will always respect the will factor. The greatest gift God gave man is salvation through Christ. And even that, he never forced it on any man. Anything that demands that you do it by force is not the Spirit of God. It is inconsistent with the nature of love. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing, I can only advise you, choose life. That's why the Holy Spirit is called a counselor. Are we listening now? Now, with all due respect, I know that I've read many books. Books, I'm, I'm, I'm one person who has had a rich heritage of a journey with the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. And I've read books on revivals. And I've seen in many writings where people say things like, the Holy Spirit told them, if you don't do this, you will die. And I respect their level of revelation. But I can tell you by the authority of scripture, it's not accurate. God does not work like that. If God did not force you to receive him, the moment God puts pressure on you and takes away the will factor, it's no longer called obedience. It's called oppression. The basis of obedience is that your power to choose must remain. You cannot tell me to obey until you give me an option to disobey. That's why there were two trees in the Garden of Eden, not one tree. Is someone learning now? This is one of the ways you judge spirits. And also, this is also one of the ways you judge prophecies. Anything that has to constrain you by force, something is wrong. No. 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 Give by force. Go there by force. Uh -uh. That language of force is not a kingdom language. Not towards the saints. Towards demon spirits, yes sir. But not the saints. Is someone learning already? Not by force. So by the time someone says, it's not that me too. It's not like I'm, God just forced me. Be careful. You are not bad, but just accept that you are still growing. When you grow, you will find out you have been blaming God. It's a lie. It's not God. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. God constrains. He puts pressure within your heart either to go or to stay. 
but he will always leave the will factor. You can choose. I can choose as an act of my will today as a man of God and stand before you and stand before the whole world and say, you know what? I'm not interested in God again. It's an act of my will. You intercede for me, but at the end of it, when you intercede for me, let me tell you what happens. The Spirit of God will keep revealing to me the excellency of staying with him and the disaster that may happen to those he has connected to my grace. But at the end of it, when he finds out I have made up my mind, he will honor my decision and raise another person. That's how God works. Are you learning the ways of God? Because there are many believers who do not submit to the Spirit of God. And the reason why they do not submit to the Spirit of God is that they are afraid. Here's what they are afraid of. I have arranged my life my own way. I have planned everything. From graduation is America. And when you are praying, what you are saying is, God, you better make America work. Every time you pray that prayer, something in you and you say, I won't pray again. Because you are suspecting that if you actually submit to the Spirit of God, let me teach you something. If you run life by your understanding, you will make many mistakes. If you run life, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he says to lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways. Verse 6, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Someone say, direct me. Yes. Shout and say, guide me, O oh God. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the bit that God has done in this ministry today is from the foolishness of the guidance of the Spirit. There is nowhere written in the Bible that Koinonia will move from Zaria to Abuja. There is nowhere written in the Bible that Koinonia will be all over the globe. It's not written directly there. There is a mandate to reach the ends of the earth. But that bespoke direction plus the season. That's the Holy Spirit for you. If you do not submit to the Holy Spirit, it will be like a man driving a beautiful car but not holding the steering. And this steering of destiny is too complicated for you to hold it. You are too small. Your hand is too small. You will not even be able to turn it. And when you insist that I will hold it and run my life my own way, very soon you see another hand bigger than your own running you to a ditch. That's Satan for you. Are we together? Let me tell you the truth. Allow God lead you by his spirit trust his leadership you submit to the holy spirit the same way you gave your life to christ that from this day spirit of the living god i trust you as the spirit of the father and i submit to your leadership i submit to your leadership to guide me to speak to me to help me i am unable to make destiny work my own way i've tried and tried and it does not work you are the spirit that guided Jesus to completion of his assignment. Even Jesus himself needed to be guided by that same spirit. The spirit of God is an ancient spirit. He has worked with many men. You are not the first. When you invite him into your life, don't you think the Holy Spirit just comes uninvited and says, hold my hands, Jerry. No, it doesn't work that way. That's a demon spirit. Even if it's after 10 years, he will stretch his hands. And say, give me a chance to produce the glory of God out of your life. And you will argue and say, I don't, I, I, I want to do things my own way. After you go around and waste time and waste destiny, you still come back to the same point. And you will see the loving spirit say, I can make this journey easier for you. For someone tonight, you came to church and God is telling you this carnal approach to life using guesswork. Are we together? Oh, this one, this one. Abuja, Lagos, Abuja, Lagos. Let me count five. One, two, three, four, five. It's Lagos. You will ruin your life that way. This kind of superstitious living. You cannot risk your life and the destinies of people just using intelligence. What if you know better and you find out you made a mistake? No. The Holy Spirit for you. When he holds you, 
you will start one journey after another. It will not make sense. So when he starts, remember I told you, he would disrupt a lot of your plans. You will not even understand your own life yourself. The only thing is that you know he's leading me. But as he leads you, through all of that darkness, all of a sudden you will start seeing a ray of light. And that light, and through the foolishness of your submitting to him, it may take a few years, but you now begin to see the beauty and glory that comes out of your life. And people will turn and say, I used to know this sister. My God, we thought this sister was a total failure. Look what God has done. Look what God has made out of his life, out of her life. Let me speak to someone here before I continue. You have run your life your own way. Listen, you came to church because God is telling you this is the stubbornness that got your grandfather where he was. God gave him a chance. He rejected it. For some of us, God came to our parents and said, can I help you? You don't know the road. There used to be an old hymn we used to sing in a seminary. My God knows the way through the wilderness. He says, all I have to do is to follow. That you hold his hands and say, Spirit of God, the world is too wicked, too complicated, too deceptive. I don't even know who is sincere and who is not, but I can trust you. I can trust you. What's that song? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct your heart trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct and he shall direct your honestly i want you to believe that the holy spirit is a master at navigating destiny he knows the mountains he knows the valleys you see because in this journey of destiny, you can be looking at a hole and not know it is a hole. It's only when your eyes tell you it's a hole and you will see beautiful lush gardens and quickly get there and find yourself in a hole that if you are not careful, you may never come out of. There are many people who have entered pits in destiny, pits in ministry, pits in family. Only God can bring them out. Because they have decided that they will stubbornly run their lives by themselves. God is speaking to someone. Trust God with your life. You have trusted people and things of lesser value. You carried your whole life and gave them. Spiritual man is beyond a church goer. The spiritual man is beyond a tongue talker. The spiritual man is beyond a routine prayer practitioner. A spiritual man is beyond a fasting person. Now, at the core of the journey to true spirituality is number one, a genuine encounter with the Son of the living God. Number two, an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, a thorough comprehension of the ways of God, the mysteries of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom, and that by the scripture. Number four, listen carefully. Submission. Submission is different from encounter. There are many people who can write books about the Holy Spirit, but it is clear from their lives that they do not want the inconvenience of submission to the governing authority of the Spirit of God as an act of faith, as an act of trust. Number five, the fifth factor that defines spirituality, write this down please, is submission to transformation by the Word of God. Again, 
just like submission to the Holy Spirit, just because you have access to the mysteries of the kingdom, that is knowledge. It does not mean you have chosen to submit to transformation. Number five is one of the cardinal pillars that transits a man from carnality to spirituality. A carnal man is a carnal man because he is carnally minded. A spiritual man is a spiritual man because he is spiritually minded. Any other factor that holds minus mentality cannot leave someone a spiritual person. There are many people bragging about spirituality, but from the lens of scripture I submit to you, they are not spiritual men. No. Transformation. Submit to transformation. This is the fifth. You are willing to submit to transformation by the word of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer, present your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, the thinking pattern that comes with this system, he says, but be ye transformed. Here it is. By the renewal of your mind, that by your transformation you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus, permit, allow, do not restrict, do not restrain this mentality from being in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. True spirituality is not just about activities. True spirituality is seen in the extent of your submission for transformation to a point where you are changed in experience. There are many people who pray but have refused to change. Did you hear what I said? Because prayer is supposed to lead to change, but they have refused to change. Many people study the scripture and quote scripture, but they have not submitted to transformation. Many people fast and keep fasting, but they have not submitted to transformation. Many people come to church. They can quote everything they have learned from everywhere, but they have not submitted to change. Can I tell you? You cannot be a, spiritually, a, a spiritual man with a carnal mind. It doesn't work that way. It is that transition from carnal thinking to true spirituality. And the Bible says the reward you get is life and peace. Submission to the word of God. Submission to transformation. That the word of God, like the spirit of God, becomes final authority over your life. You have been indoctrinated by the value system of the kingdom. Are we together? I have taught you that one of the ways you test transformation is that it becomes difficult for people to connect you to any region within the earth. It's difficult for them to say you are Yoruba or Hausa or Igbo, maybe by your accent or by your look, that's fine. But by behavior, no. Your behavior is so transitioned, it betrays where you are coming from. You can't see someone and say, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Uh -huh. It's all these people. That's how they behave. No, that means you've not grown. Because the kingdom of God has its culture too. And when you submit to the word of God, something begins to happen to you. You see that? He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my mind looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my destiny looks like him. See, when you know this, you will not only get born again and keep bragging I've been a Christian for 10 years and make a mockery of your Christian experience. The next thing to ask yourself is whose mindset am I representing? Whose mindset have I embraced? Stumbling blocks 
that will not allow you to be a representation of the image of Christ in experience. Are we together? Submission to transformation. This is what is happening to you. That's why I salute you and I take your coming every week. Not just as a, I don't have a membership mentality as a man of God. I'm too serious to be thinking membership. No. You are beyond members. This is God's, God's vessel, God's ship on a project towards transformation. Is the reason why I take my work very seriously. You see that? Because every time we have the opportunity to meet, whether to meet virtually or to meet here, is the business of transformation. I know that if you are not transformed, the reality of the Christ life will not be manifest in you. And this is what has plagued many people. Some of you are here and you are wondering why the promises of God cannot find expression. There is a kind of believer that can capture the promises of God in your life in experience. And if you don't transition, do you know, for instance, and I will wrap up with that. The believer who cannot give up anger, look up please, anger alone, just let's use one fleshly attribute of anger, that you cannot die to anger by the spirit. Anger alone can wreck all your relationships and destroy your destiny forever. Are we together? How about lust? Not just lust in terms of immoral behavior. Lust for things, money. It can relocate you out of the will of God. Send wrong people to your life. You see that now. I hope you are listening to what I'm telling you. Just one fleshly attribute is like a virus that can enter your system and wreck you into pieces wreck you into pieces i love god oh but let me tell you me my own kind of pastor is when i'm angry i will come down to the member and beat the person and come up you see don't celebrate bad things change whether you're a man of god whether you're a member if you find out something in you is not good don't justify it because a man of god is still a student change don't justify it. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me hallelujah i want you to know that if you refuse to transit to become spiritual at the end of your life your christian testimony will never inspire anybody to love god because all that your life will capture is a plethora of events that will cause you pain, misrepresent Christ, and perhaps cut short your life. You will never see the reality of the victorious life at work. And you will be wondering why. God will push you to destiny help us, but anger will drive you away from them. Demon spirits will come to oppress you, but because you have not submitted to that which builds your discernment, you will fall cheaply into all kinds of things. You see, the reason why we pray, the reason why we fast, the reason why we study the word, the reason why we submit ourselves to all the spiritual disciplines is to this end. It is not to show religiosity, it is as part of the tools that sponsor that transition to become spiritual. The justification for prayer huh, is not just doing it in the presence of people. It's the change that happens 
as proof that it has changed you. The justification for studying scripture is not just to quote it in the presence of people. That can be pretense. Is that you have been so immersed by that word, you have become one with it. So it's not just something you preach. It's not even what you do again. It is who you are. Just like God, you have become an expression of the logos of God in experience. That when men look at you, the next person they think about is Jesus Christ. And it's not because you are holding a Bible. It's not because you are standing on stage. It is because you have become one with the word. One with the spirit. Through the vehicle of prayer. Through the vehicle of fasting. Through the vehicle of listening to the word of God. Most believers don't know why they pray. Let me tell you the truth. A major part of believers in Africa pray because of guilt. Not because they want to grow. They just pray because it seems like they don't want to be blackmailed. That they are not spiritual by not being prayerful. And so people just do it as a ritual. And you will see a lot of energy dissipated in prayer. But the transformation it should capture is not captured in the life of the people. A lot of believers study scripture simply, especially men of God. We like to study scripture simply because we want to have the, go through the rhetorics of intelligence. But the transformation that comes by submitting to the word is largely deficient in our lives. The spiritual man, hear me, is not just one who is out of the spirit, interacting with spirits, because occultists do that. The spiritual man is one who in order of priority has encountered Christ. The spiritual man has encountered the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Has access to the mysteries of the kingdom. And then has chosen as an act of his or her will to submit to the governing authority of the Spirit of God. To guide you in all matters. And you have chosen to submit to transformation. That the word of God becomes the vista with which I look at life. Are we together? Are you learning? Now, let me teach you something as we find a place to pray. Hmm. Someone is rising in this place tonight. And by the spirit of the living God, you are stepping into a dimension in the spirit where your life becomes a sign and a wonder. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen. The Bible talks about attaining unto the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, please. Give us from verse 10. The Bible says, he that descended is also the same that ascended far above the heavens, that he may feel all things. Verse 11, it says, and he gave unto some, please pay attention now. You need to get what I'm about to show you. He gave unto some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Verse 12, why did he give that? For the perfecting, the word perfecting means the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying, listen, of the body of Christ. And here is the standard that God has for every believer, verse 13. It says, till we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, mature, entire man. Then he says, unto the measure of the stature, help me please, of the fullness of Christ. That is, that is God's destiny as far as the making of the believer is concerned. That you can get to a point in the spirit where you can attain the fullness of Christ and manifest that. I've studied this for a while because in my mind, I'm just wondering and saying, how does a man become a reflection of the Christ in his fullness? Is that even possible? Can a man actually be a reflection of the fullness of Christ? I found out it is true and I want to show you how right now and then we'll pray that a man can attain onto a state of maturity where your life becomes a wholesome reflection 
of Christ in his fullness to your world, to the earth. Now, in learning Jesus Christ and in reflecting him, please, I want you to listen. And if you're a man of God here, I want you to listen. If you are training people to become like Christ, these are the areas you must focus on. If these areas are not captured in your training, the people you are leading will never become like Christ. It doesn't matter what kind of spiritual activities you engage in. The formation of Christ in the saints has a formula. Are we together? There is something you have to guide the people into understanding, receiving, submitting to, and you will find out not just one, two, three people in mass. You will find out that ordinary people, weak people, sinners as we call them, will suddenly begin to transition in the spirit until you have the privilege of leading people who are truly like Christ. Can I show you this? Number one, the first area, the first area you must focus on, building in your attempt to build in people, the image, the character, the formation of Christ, the first area you have to focus on to mold in them is the nature of Christ. The first dimension of the fullness of Christ that must be captured and reflected in people is the nature of Christ. The nature of Christ. The nature of Christ. The people you are leading are not becoming like Jesus if his nature is not manifesting and if his nature is not reflecting in them. Notice the progression. The primary assignment of any man of God in an attempt to build a people who are a reflection of Christ, in an attempt to build true spiritual people, is to partner with the Word and the Holy Spirit to see to it that the nature of the Christ is formed in them. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. Now, what you know and you call the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you read KJV, follow carefully. KJV makes it look like there are nine fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering. And there's nothing wrong if you see it that way. But classically speaking, the fruit of the Spirit, you notice it's not said fruits. It is one fruit. The epitome of the manifestation of the Christ is love. The nature of God at work in a man is the love nature. But that this nature expresses itself in all of these varieties. Joy, an expression of love. Peace, an expression of love. Patience, an expression of love. Gentleness. Gentleness is not a personality thing. It is the outworking of the spirit of the Christ in a yielded vessel. Listen, as you are looking at these things now, debunk respectfully from the lens of scripture that thought that this is my personality. I am an angry person. I am not, gel I'm not um, gentle. I am jealous. That's how we are. It's a lie. When you become a spiritual man, it is the journey to deadening every other thing that is not of the Christ. Are we together now? The nature of Christ. Everybody say the nature of Christ. That means I should be able to bring someone, Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, South South, Middle Belt, Caribbean, American, European. Group all of them together. If it is true they are spiritual men, they should look like relatives from the same family. Are we together? That you should have reduced like a viral load to its barest minimum the character of the flesh. When you look at them, please keep that scripture. This is what I should find in a spiritual man. Love. In all its expressions. Joy. You see that? Peace. Patience. I'm not a patient person, but I love God. Walk on it. Walk on it. Allow the spirit of God. Live out the character of the Christ. All of these things, we saw it in the life of Jesus. And the Bible says, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. We always think of this in, with respect to power. But power issue will come. But the first area that you must labor with the spirit to build is the character and the nature of Christ. Say it again, the nature of Christ. 
Gentleness, goodness, faith. Uh -huh. Verse 23. Meekness. You know what meekness is? Teachability. Teachability. The antidote to pride. Teachability. Temperance. Another word for temperance is self-control. 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 It says against such there is no law. Listen to me. When you look at a Christian, a child of God, who has truly become a spiritual man, the first thing that should catch your attention is not tongues. The first thing that should catch your attention is not rema. The first thing that should catch your attention, listen carefully, is not manifestations of power. The first thing that should catch your attention when you meet a real Christian is the energy that flows from his love life. Did you hear what I said? You see that we have a lot of work to do in our lives. How many of us say we are Christians and people stand and they want to run away? Because hate has an energy. You can feel it. We vent our anger in our sermons. We vent our anger as we deal with people in our offices. And we wrap up everything in the name of the Lord. No, sir. No, sir. The real proof that you are becoming a spiritual man, I am telling you this, with no excuses whatsoever, is that the love of Christ is growing within you. We say that after every service, and yet we do not believe it. Here's what we say. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, we even say the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Be with us all. Amen. Love. Love for God and love for people. Everybody say love. love. The, I'm saying this to you so that you will check your life right now. You came to church. And if you find out that the love of God is not growing, and if it's only God you love, you are lying. I hope you know that. Because the nature of God's love is both vertical and horizontal. If your love is only to God... <clears throat> The more you love him, the more you love those he died for. The more you love him, the more you love those he's trusting you with. You see, as a man of God, for instance, when you love the people God has sent to you, you don't need to be preached into not manipulating them. All of these things we try to address in the body of Christ, the real problem is that people do not love God and they do not love the people that God has sent to them. Because there are many, many things that live your life when love is there. Are we together? When you love God and you love the people he has sent to you, you will love them too much to deceive them. You will love them too much to manipulate them. You will love them too much to try and turn their minds for your own personal gain. No, this is beyond an issue of conscience. This is as a testament that the nature of God dwells in you. How many believers have love? When you begin to make teachings on love, most believers just think it's a feminine thing. Their mind goes straight to Valentine. And they think love, love. Is it really this love thing? I want miracle and power. Is the reason why many people become cheated. Because love is not as weak as you think it is. That's what defeated Satan. People come to church and just for three hours, they cannot tolerate the people sitting by their left and right. Three hours. Because hatred in them is boiling like water at 100 degrees, waiting for who to pour on. Sit down. The next time you push me, I will slap you, even though we're in church. Let me just tell you, I'm not like that. If you are tired of me, go and look for another neighbor. Lift up your hand, Jesus, I love you. And God is saying, who are you deceiving? I hope you are learning. Love. The real missing ingredient. 
Because our world does not know the value of love. Love is not a feminine thing. It's not just some weak emotional thing. It is the very manifestation of the nature of God. Let me tell you, it is beautiful to see a believer that really, truly has the love of Christ. There are things you will not do to your neighbor if you have love. You will not rejoice. I don't want to take you to 1 Corinthians 13 and show you what the Bible says about love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I have not love. Is that in your Bible? Though I offer my body to be born, say sacrifice. Uh -huh. Many people have the power and the energy for sacrifice. But the love component is not there. It says, though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries. I've not met such a man. And though I have all knowledge and I have all faith to move mountains. And I have not love, I am nothing. Verse 3. It says, though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, say charity. And I give my body to be born, matayadom. And I do not have love. It does not profit me anything. Then it says, love is patience. I wish we have new King James. Love is patient. Thank you. Suffers long. It is kind. It does not envy. Are you seeing now? So don't say I have love. Check whether you have envy. If envy is there, envy push part of love out to be there. Does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Verse 5. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own self. Is not easily provoked or provoked. Thinketh no evil. You see that? Love is also a mentality issue. Verse 6. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Verse 7. Bears all things. Believes all things. It doesn't mean believe nonsense, whatever they bring. I hope you understand that now. Hopes all things. Endures all things. This is the character of love. When the love of God is at work in your life and you're a true Christian, the first thing unbelievers want to see is not power. The first thing unbelievers want to see is love. Let me tell you the truth. I have studied church growth and I want to tell you something. This is not a pastor's conference. I don't know why God is going this way this night. But let me tell you one real secret to church growth. Love. You will not hear this taught in Bible in pastor's conferences. Rather, people can say, you know what, do this. Some of the biggest churches today in the world, with all due respect, are not necessarily power churches. He said, John did no miracles, but there was one testimony he had. He was an honest man. He had love within his heart. I've seen people who are very powerful and wonder why nobody wants to listen to them. Because human beings are not only looking for power. We have made power look like it is everything. No. There is a place for that as you'll be learning. But the first manifestation of the Christ-like dimension in a man is his nature. Never forget this. Before you seek power, seek to be like Christ by having his love and his character at work in you. Then your being powerful will be valuable. But it is a dangerous thing to pursue power without the nature of God first. And leaders, when you are mentoring your people, don't be in a hurry to just lay hands and impart people. No, build the nature of Christ in them first. An anointed preacher who does not have the character of Christ is a dangerous person. I tell you this. It's the reason why there's a lot of misbehavior with the anointing. If I'm angry, I can speak a curse on you anyhow. That is not a power problem. It is a nature of God problem. One time the disciples saw some people and said, should we call down fire? Like Elijah, he said, ah. Jesus looked at them and said, do you not know of whom you are of? No. This is another kind of spirit at work in you. Place your hand on your chest and pray in one minute. I desire to have the love nature of Christ. Please pray. Sincerely from your heart. When the love of God is at work in you, you do not rejoice over the hurt and the pain of others. The body of Christ needs to grow out of this. We rejoice over the hurt and the pain of others. No. The Christ-like formation starts with his love. The love of Jesus. 
that you hear that someone lost a job in your office, you are not rejoicing and saying confirmation of prophecy. I saw it. No. You go back and you say, how, how will this man now? It is love that should lead us to prayer. It is love that should lead us to Bible study. It is love that should lead us to fasting. Any other thing that leads you aside from love is not of faith and it is sin. Love must be the reason why I desire growth in my life and in this ministry. If love is not there, the alternative will be competition. The alternative will be envy. The alternative will be jealousy. The alternative will be vain glory. Love is a purifier. It purifies motives. Number two. The first dimension of Christ that must be captured in any man to be spiritual is called his nature, the nature of Christ. Number two, the second dimension of Christ that must be captured in every believer to be called a spiritual man is called the mind or the wisdom of Christ. So the first is the nature of Christ, the love of Christ. The second dimension is called the mind of of Christ Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 the mind of Christ the mind of Christ the mind of Christ the wisdom in fact I think it's um is it first Corinthians 2 7 or so I hope I got that right give it to us let's see first Corinthians chapter 2 and 7 yes the wisdom the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory I used to think when the Bible says the mind of Christ, it just means the brain of Christ. But the mind, the word mind of Christ there does not just mean the mentality of Christ. It's an overall capture of the wisdom of God. One of the ways you manifest Christ is in wisdom. There is something in the Bible called the wisdom of the just. Luke 1 17. The wisdom of the just. Anybody who is in Christ, there is a dimension of wisdom. It's called the mind of Christ. Transformation, but a manifestation of wisdom. If that wisdom is not captured in your life, you are not a spiritual man. It's like a general that does not know how to shoot a gun. Is that a real general? How did he become a general? Even a young boy graduated from NDA who cannot shoot a gun will not graduate. Are we together? A general that cannot shoot a gun. A football superstar who has never scored when one penalty kick. A policeman who has never made one arrest. No. There is a wisdom component that is required in life. Are we together? Yeah. Listen. When you believe this, you will cry out for the nature of Christ. To be more like him. But then, in addition to being like him, you have to justify his nature by supplying to your world a dimension of wisdom they know can only be found in Christ. Are you seeing it now? The first place it affects is your heart. Huh? Then it goes to your mind. Are you seeing that now? Then it goes to your hands. Power. Your heart. Purified. You become like Christ in experience. I shared with you here humorously a story many years ago. We went to look for instruments from a man of God. And after the man was done preaching, preached powerfully. When we met the man, he lambasted and insulted us. Used words that even a baby Christian should not use. And at the end of it, I remember. It's very, very young boys were on our way going back. And I was thinking to myself, what kind of a preacher is this? I'm comparing in my mind two people. One person who minutes ago was standing and shouting and the other person who stood and was insulting us and calling anything he can remember. And I'm saying, no, this, is, this ought not to be so. The nature of Christ and then the wisdom, the wisdom of God. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ that the dimension of wisdom that will begin to flow from your life today, it will cause everybody to love God because of you. 
that the wisdom that you will begin to command it will produce extraordinary results from your life you will gain mastery over the mysteries of the kingdom and you will engage them with such level of mastery your life will be an unending episode of kingdom exploits you believe that say amen, amen. it takes wisdom to build and excel in ministry it takes wisdom to build and excel in career it takes wisdom to maintain relationships it takes wisdom to frontier and champion kingdom activities behind the mighty works you see that the saints command is the wisdom of god ordinary men fortified by divine wisdom wisdom that is not sophia not just earthly wisdom Wisdom that is not just sensual and scientific. Wisdom that is not just demonic or diabolic. Wisdom that comes from above. Pure, potent, carrying the ability to, to, to deliver results. Be tired of your non-productive nature as a believer and begin to contend for wisdom. Something is wrong with my life. I love the Lord. Let people not look at your life and say, this man, oh, if he's been a Christian, he loves being a, he's a child of God. But in terms of kingdom results, don't, call, don't go to him. He has 100% love and zero wisdom. Bad decisions, wisdom. The wisdom of the just. There is a kind of education believers must have. Your secular education, as powerful as it is, is wonderful, needed, useful, but not enough to produce the kind of godlike destiny you seek to produce. Do you know why? The variables that you need to overcome to be successful God's way are so many. And not all of them are captured in your secular training. You have to be re-enlightened, re-educated again God's way to equip you with the requisite wisdom to reign as a king and as a priest that you are. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom. And wisdom is not just a spiritual thing alone. Wisdom affects your mind. The way you think. The way, there is a way you can do the business God has given you. You will see the... Let me tell you this. How do you know God's wisdom is at work? Because you will see God's dimension of results through your decisions. The moment your decisions are still producing human results, you have not brought God's wisdom. I tell you extraordinary undeniable works by the hand of God that is wisdom for you wisdom in ministry wisdom in business wisdom in your marriage wisdom in how you are raising your children wisdom in how you are dealing with your finances wisdom in leadership how you are raising the people you are raising you see that now Something happens to a people when they become wise unto godliness. Not earth wisdom, not smartness, not wisdom that manipulates someone, cough out 2,000 and you say you are smart. No, that is demonic, diabolic wisdom. There is a wisdom that puts you in a class. A class that it will be clear that it's God that kept you here. My God, I have seen careers of this wisdom in my life. I've had the honor to meet a few of them. And when I do, for the times that I have, I cry for an impartation of that wisdom. The wisdom that comes from above. There is the gift of wisdom. There is the spirit of wisdom. You will never be able to do any work of the kingdom and excel except you have wisdom. So number one, the nature of God. Number two, the mind of Christ. Are you ready for number three? I will give you this and then we'll pray to end the service tonight. The spiritual man. The third dimension of the reflection of Christ that must be captured in the believer is called the works of Christ. So here we have the nature or character of Christ. Number two, we have the mind slash wisdom of Christ. And then the final phase are the works of Christ. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, with power, with power, 
when it has to do with the works, you see power has been introduced now. Power. Who went about doing good? It didn't say who went about organizing programs. He went about doing good as a lifestyle. The works of Christ. Doing good. This is beyond just charity. Doing good. Bringing life. Becoming like a river that everywhere you flow to, life happens for the people. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Notice three words that you should not forget when it has to do with the works of Christ. The Holy Spirit, power, Satan. The Holy Spirit who brings the power and that power is primarily against the demonic activities that assaults the saints. The works of Christ. In John chapter 20 and verse 21. John chapter 20 and verse 21. Please give it to us. John 20 and verse 21. Do we have that? John 20 and verse 21. So Jesus said unto them again, Peace to you, as the Father has sent me, my God, as the Father has sent me. He did not just send me to reveal his nature, he sent me to reveal his power. When Jesus went to the temple to read the messianic prophecy, he opened it and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. You are wondering what the works of Christ are? This, I'm listening for you. To bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are oppressed. The works of Christ. If you want to be a reflection of the Christ as a spiritual man. You have the character of Christ. The wisdom of Christ. But you need the works of Christ. And this is where the value of the anointing comes. When the sick are healed supernaturally to the glory of God, that's the works of Christ. When you reach down to the poor and the needy and by helping them to supply help and aid and then teaching them the principles that empower them, that is the works of Christ. When you become light upon the earth, salt upon the earth, light, you see that? The works of Christ. There are many believers who do not want to contend for this dimension of power to do the works of Christ. It is the nature of Christ plus the wisdom of Christ plus the works of Christ that represents the fullness of Christ at work in a believer. Let me take that again. The nature or the character of Christ plus the wisdom, the mind of Christ plus the works of Christ extraordinary exploits by the spirit and through the word when these three dimensions are captured in your life you are truly a spiritual man a spiritual man therefore is not just a man who loves to study the bible it's not just a man who loves to pray it's not just a man who loves to go to church it's not just a man who wants to serve god in ministry a spiritual man you can safely summarize it as one who has worked with the Spirit of God to be able to embrace and inculcate within himself in experience the nature of Christ who is manifesting by submission to the word you see that the wisdom of Christ and who by the Spirit of grace is demonstrating and manifesting the works of Christ the chiefest of them being the work of global evangelization, bringing many to Christ. Because according to scripture, God desires that all men be saved and then to come unto the knowledge of the Son. Tonight, there are three categories of people in this place. Number one, those who have never been saved, unregenerate, they have not met Jesus, they've been at crusades, they've been at churches, they have Christian names, 
born from Christian families related to men and women of God, but they have never made this decision for Jesus. Number two, there are believers who are barely saved and have remained without an intention to grow using the parameters that I've given you. They are just out of that list that I gave you for a spiritual man. It is only one over five they have. Their only justification is that they, have, they are saved. But they have not submitted. They have not encountered the person of the Holy Spirit. Nor are they interested. They have not encountered the, the logos of God. The thoughts of God. And they are not willing to submit to the Spirit of God. They are not willing to submit to transformation by the Word of God. And then we have this third category. And there is no graduation in this third category. You never get to a point where you say, I am done becoming a spiritual man. No. It is a bar measured upon a bar measured. By the time you cover grounds in spirituality, God opens up another layer. And you see that there is still more of his nature that needs to be formed. There is still more of his wisdom that needs to manifest through you. There is still more of his power that needs to be revealed. By the time you cover grounds, after 10 years, he commends you and then he gives you a greater charge to become like him in a greater way. Let me tell you the truth. For anyone, including you, including me, who will contend by the spirit that from today, I will see to it that I will take advantage of the life of God that I already have and allow the spirit of God, the word of God, through all the activities of prayer, fasting, the word study, engaging in mentorship that I will allow by the spirit the full formation of the nature of God in my life. That love nature reflected in the fruit of the spirit and then the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ, a superior transformed mentality, a God-like mentality producing God-like dimensions of results and then for the power of God that for as long as I'm alive, through my words, through my hands, many will see Christ at work, a display of his power, dumbfounding principalities and powers, that under my watch, there will be no untimely death in my family again. That under my watch, it will never be that people are desirous of a job or whatever to do. No, you come there as the manifestation of the Christ. So you don't just say things you cannot defend. You can gather your family and tell them I found a way. This family can become a great reflection of Christ. And they say how? You will tell them number one, the nature of Christ can superimpose all these demonic manifestations, these habits and challenges that misrepresent Christ. Number two, by transformation, the mind of Christ can find expression in and through our lives communicating the wisdom of God, commanding mighty works through it. And number three, by the supernatural engracing of the spirit, I can get to a point where I attain unto power, genuine spiritual power. I believe in the power of God. But I believe that in order of priority, the nature of God is greater than his power. It is true. If you are asked to choose between the power of God and the nature of God, it is wise to choose the nature of God because it is impossible to truly have the nature of God and not eventually manifest his power. Are we together? So if you've had it the other way around, unfortunately, you see, all these three dimensions, we have communicated part of them and we call our communications of part of them denominations. They only represent our emphasis. So there are those who camp around the nature of Christ. And that becomes their definition with all due respect of the fullness of Christ. That is inaccurate. There are those who don't care about the nature of Christ. They are especially the teaching ministry, the wisdom of Christ. And you find people manifesting dimensions of wisdom without the corresponding character. And then we have another group that all there is is power and the charismatic gifts of the spirit. It doesn't matter whether you are a criminal. 
it doesn't matter whether you are a devil. Once the gift of the spirit can flow, that's not the way it's supposed to be. This is the correct arrangement. The nature of the Christ, the mind, the wisdom of the Christ, the power of the Christ, the works of Christ. This is what represents the fullness of God's nature. And this is what Paul was telling the church in Ephesus, that it is to this end that God went through all that labor to give unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers. Are we together? And pastors. Why? To be able to help the body of Christ manifest in its fullness the nature of Christ, manifest the wisdom of Christ, and manifest the power of Christ. And let me tell you honestly before we round up, you will seldom be given an assignment to complete or manifest all these three by yourself. No. Usually there are portions of these dimensions given to us. The whole job is supposed to do be done by a corporate body, not only one person. So if you have a rich understanding of the nature of Christ and you stop there, you will rob people from manifesting the wisdom of Christ and doing the works of Christ. You see that? That is the reason why it is a dangerous thing when the body of Christ fights itself. This is what we are fighting. The believer who only manifests the nature of Christ will never manifest the fullness of Christ. The believer who manifests only the wisdom of Christ will draw people to him, but lack of character, the nature of Christ, will even bring a bigger betrayal to the name of Christ because you will be like that tree. You attract people by your wisdom, but when they come, because you see, proximity reveals. The moment you come close, you will see, ah, no now, not again. And if all you have is the power of God, the greatest misrepresentation of the Christ will come from manifesting his power without his wisdom and without his nature. That is dangerous. Because of these three, the, mo the one that has the most attraction is the power dimension. So it will bring multitudes and you'll find out you are bankrupt of wisdom, but sadly bankrupt of his nature. So in mentoring believers, you don't start with power. You don't start with wisdom. Discipleship 101, the labor of building the character of Christ in people. Then the wisdom of Christ. Then the power of Christ. You have raised a mighty army for Jesus. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Thank you. We're going to pray as we wrap up. That even for people who God has helped to be spiritual, there are various dimensions of these formations of Christ in us. There are people, the richest dimension of the formation of Christ in you is his wisdom, not his character. There are those, the richest formation of the Christ in you. It's not like the nature is not there, but it's not rich enough to bring glory to Christ. God is calling us tonight to adjust these various areas. For the one who has the power of God more than character, more than wisdom, God is calling you to step up these two. Don't just perform miracles. Don't just prophesy. There is room to know the word of God and have an understanding of scripture. Your antidote to error. But more importantly, the nature of Christ. That the closer people come to you, they will truly see that you are a representation of Christ. Imagine you having a rich manifestation of his nature and character in experience. Having sound wisdom, understanding the ways of God, that the moment you open your mouth is wisdom that is communicated. And then having the faculty to defend the things that you propose through wisdom. That you have power. You are not deficient of spiritual power. That's going to be your prayer. Please open your mouth and pray. You know what area is deficient in your life. Take the next few minutes to cry before God. Lord, I'm praying, walk upon my character. Let the nation see you when they see me. Someone is praying. Online, make sure you are praying. 
I desire a richer manifestation of the nature of Christ. The attributes of the flesh that misrepresent God in my life. Someone is praying that they die and give room for the Christ to be seen. Pray for those who have done a good job allowing the fruit of the Spirit manifest. The fruit of the Spirit is important, but you need in addition to it wisdom. Many people lack wisdom. They are born again. They are sincere Christians, but they are poor. They are broke. They cannot build any organization. They cannot build any ministry. They can't build anything. They can't build their children. The problem is not lack of character. The problem is lack of wisdom. Anytime you do not have the power to build anything that lasts is a wisdom problem. Go ahead and pray. And there are those who have wisdom. When you listen to them, they say a lot of intelligent things, but there's no demonstration of the spirit. We can talk about healing, but then the sick are never healed. Talk about liberty. We can teach intelligently about liberty. But the performance dimension of God is not there in their life. Please go ahead and pray. Oh, salvation has come. Oh, salvation has come. Redemption has come. Oh, redemption has come. Oh, freedom has come. Oh. Has come. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I Are you praying 10 more seconds? Father, your nature, the character of the Christ. Pray against everything you know. Anger, lust, jealousy, bitterness, rage. Don't keep quiet. Everything that fights the nature of Christ should be your project in this prayer. Let it die, let it die, let it die in the name of Jesus. That when men see me, the first thing they see is the nature and the character of Christ. Love, kindness, joy. Now pray for wisdom. That's the reason you are not able to build anything. Not your finances, not your business, not your ministry. Every time you cannot build is a wisdom problem. It may not be a character problem, a wisdom problem. It is by wisdom a house is built. It is by wisdom a destiny is built. It is by wisdom a ministry is built. Every time you do not build to excel, you do not build to last. The wisdom of Christ is deficient in you. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Please go back and listen to this teaching again. That the signature attestations to your being a spiritual man 
is that you must reflect Christ in his fullness. And that in reflecting Christ to his fullness, there are three compartments. His nature, his character, the fruit of the spirit, the recreated human spirit who is yielded to the Holy Spirit will produce these fruits. And then his wisdom, the empowerment to build anything that brings glory to Christ, sponsored by wisdom, the quality of your decisions, the superiority of your understanding, the dexterity of your thinking, wisdom, and then the power of God, the ability to demonstrate Christ here and now, to bring heavenly reality to be made manifest, supernaturally so. It is impossible to walk these three things and not truly reflect Christ. The fullness of Christ is not a mystery. It is the nature of Christ at work in you plus the wisdom of the Christ, the mind of Christ richly formed in you in ever increasing measure plus the power of God finding expression. So the next time you go to the place of prayer and you say, Lord, I want to become like you, you are now not praying a vague prayer. You know what you are praying. A greater formation of your nature a greater importation of your wisdom, a greater manifestation of your power. You see, you are now praying profitably. When you open your Bible and you are studying, this is still what you are becoming. The next time you say, I want to become like Christ, you can help correct someone's understanding so that that becoming like Christ does not become abstract. To the average believer, when they say, I want to become like Christ, they don't even have a picture I have given definition to that abstract concept. It is the nature of the Christ, the mind, the wisdom of the Christ, and the power of the Christ enabling you to do the works of Christ. This is what is captured in the fullness of Christ. For every conference you will attend, for every church service, for every message you will listen to, for every prayer program, every fasting program, every word study program, every book you will buy and read, I want you to interpret everything from the lens of this journey. This is your journey with the Spirit. This is your journey with God. Lift your hands. Father, I pray for your people in the name that is above all names, the grace to allow that life of Christ that they received at the point of salvation, the grace to allow this find expression I'm praying may that grace rest upon you. Amen. Number two, for those who have manifested the nature of Christ in such a rich way, but you've not been able to build anything in your life, the matters that make for life, you are defeated there completely. Defeated in your finances, defeated in leadership. You've not been able to raise anybody or do anything great for the kingdom. I'm praying for you. As you begin to journey through the world, May authentic wisdom be imparted upon you. Amen. Number three, I'm praying for those who are getting frustrated by saying the many things God can do as revealed by wisdom, but not able to demonstrate it here and now. In your life, not the life of those who trust you. I'm praying for you. This missing power component that will help you do the works of Christ, let it rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus, for everyone who is struggling with the flesh, attributes of the flesh, anger, jealousy, competition, all the things that keep misrepresenting your knowing God, I'm praying for you. The spirit that is behind that programming, I curse it right now. I curse it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray for you. The next time someone is looking to see who God is, may God send you to them. As a representation of the image of the Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please, I want to encourage you. 
go back home. Take this as an instruction. Listen to this message again. Don't assume you understood everything I said. Stay with the spirit of grace. Absorb it into your spirit. And you find someone who is confused about your spiritual journey. You don't have the time to explain all this. Just give the person this message and say, listen to this message, the spiritual man. Be patient and follow through the thoughts. And then you will see that indeed becoming like Christ is not abstract. There is a guided pathway that can help men become like Christ. You are here and you need Jesus Christ. Please allow me to make the altar call while we are still standing. Remember I told you, the first transition from a natural man to a believer in fact, before we even talk about a spiritual man, is your encounter with Christ. Do not allow this meeting end without your making this decision. And for the sake of one or two persons that whilst you were listening to me, you said, Apostle, in truth, I have not made this decision. Or you are saying, I want to rededicate my life. I'm going to count one to five. And I'll need you to be fast on this because of our time. Pick your Bibles, your bags, everything you brought to church. Please be on your way as I begin to count. Come right in front of me. By now, you should know that you don't need cajoling. We are talking Jesus here and your destiny. I begin my counting now. One. Let's appreciate them as they come. God bless you. Your bags, your Bible. Please stand for sake of space. God bless you. Stand. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. I won't go back. Can't go back. To the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. I don't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came. Keep coming, one more time. I don't go back, can't go back to the way it if you're joining them, please come quickly. I'm about to lead them to pray. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, all of you who have responded to this call. And for the many who are responding to this call, whether in your home, you're following by television or internet, as I lead God's people to make this prayer, I want you to make that prayer to knowing that this becomes your point of transition from being a natural person and then you begin your journey to being a spiritual man, spiritual woman in experience. May I request that you lift your right hand, if you can, please, high above your head. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that from today, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. You have brought them before you. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Lord, we honor you for these many who have come to you. And I pray that based on the authority of scripture, that their sins be forgiven from this moment. And that in the name of Jesus, they are bona fide recipients of your life. Empowered to live the victorious Christian life. Knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, and living for him all the days of their lives. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, you walk in righteousness and you live victorious Christian lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please do me a favor by walking to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who are waiting to have a word with you very briefly. And then all of you will be back to your seats. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Hi, you're welcome to Believers Global TV. On this channel, we create Christian content that will help you in your spiritual growth, ranging from perfect of God, powerful prayer sessions, night videos, and many more. All the content that we create on this channel are purely Christian content. And if you know that this channel is helpful, subscribe to our channel. 
Thank you for listening to this message. Are you blessed at all by this message? If yes, then smash that like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Remember that when this life is over, everyone will give an account to God. Jesus Christ died for me and you so that we can receive the forgiveness of our sins, so as to stand holy and faultless before God. See you in our next video. We love you very much.